بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having given us a beautiful day of this nature. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having granted us the ability to fast during the month of Ramadan. For having allowed us to see the blessed month of Ramadan, we ask Allah to make us from amongst those who have earned forgiveness during this blessed month and from amongst those who have turned their lives for the better. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to grant blessings to the entire family of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all his companions, and we ask Allah to bless every single one of us. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa taala grants us occasions of happiness when we deserve it. It is important. It is very important that we realize this occasion of happiness. and understand why is it that we have been given such a day if you look at both of the eids they happen to come after great acts of worship take a look at this particular eid we have just fasted for the entire month of ramadan every single day we abstain from food and drink so allah says today it is prohibited for you to fast i want to give you a day when you are not allowed to fast not at all a person would be totally sinful if they had to fast on this day and after having engaged in so much of voluntary salah voluntary salah where every evening we came and every evening we engaged in prayer and we asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for goodness and at the same time we listened to the beautiful words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we made an effort to read his word and we made an effort to understand his word and we tried our best to listen to the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with a day where we can enjoy ourselves but we should never forget that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word is not only for the month of ramadan it is the word of allah that will result in our peace in this world and the next if we are to treat the quran like a book that is only to be read in the month of ramadan we would be losers but in the month of ramadan it is almost imposed upon us almost imposed upon us to read the quran and to make an extra effort to engage in interaction with the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the degree that we taste the calmness we taste the peace that we achieve from it such that outside ramadan we would all be at a loss if we did not read the same quran so this is why now that we have tasted the sweetness of the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It is very very important for every one of us to know that if we would like the same sweetness outside the month of Ramadan we need to fulfill at least that salah which is compulsory and we need to read the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make an effort to understand it and put it into practice and teach it to others the least to our own children may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us a person who deserves eid is a person who has made this type of an intention to say ya allah i have engaged in acts of worship throughout ramadan but i am not going to stop here this is just a day of happiness i promise you my entire life will change subhanallah and i promise you my relation with your word and your kalam your book the quran will will not only have been for this particular month but it's going to continue so my brothers and sisters the first resolution we make inshallah is we will not miss a single salah by the will of allah if we could read every night 20 rak'at imagine that which is compulsory on a daily basis does not even reach 20 on a daily basis and it is spread out throughout the day 
why is it that we cannot make a resolution here and now? Ya Allah, salah, I'm not going to miss. And inshallah, we will achieve a lot of peace. Allah has guaranteed that a person who fulfills salah will definitely be protected from evil and immorality. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. He who establishes salah, Allah says, definitely that salah will prohibit from immorality and evil. So it's important for us to make that promise to Allah. The second promise we make is that every one of us will make an effort to read the Quran. We will try and improve the recitation of the Quran. I'm sure we have all heard beautiful melodious recitals of the Huffad who have led us in Salat to Taraweeh. It is up to us not only to say this was a powerful recital. What have you done, my brother or my sister, to improve your own recitation? It's a very important resolution. Even if you are inching forward one inch at a time, improve your recitation. And we need to know no matter what level you have got to, there will always be room for improvement. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So that is the second resolution. We are all going to make an effort to improve our recitation of the Quran by the will of Allah. This is when we will taste the sweetness of Eid and our lives will change. The third resolution, every one of us needs to make sure that we make an effort to understand what this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all about. Because Shahru Ramadan is also known as Shahru Quran, the month of the Quran. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. We have indeed revealed the Quran in this night of decree. The night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, I'm sure we would know, is one of the last of the odd nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And we would also know that Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. It is in the month of Ramadan that this Qur'an was revealed. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam used to come every single year and listen to the recitation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam after reciting the Qur'an. How much was revealed up to that time was recited by both of them. Al-Mudarasah. That means the two of them used to come in and study the Quran, the recital. This is when the order was made clear and so on. So if this was the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the month of Ramadan, what about us? We have made an effort, but many of us are guilty of not knowing the meanings of the basic surahs that we even read in Salah. And this is why sometimes we lack peace. We are not happy in our homes. But the owner of peace, one of his names is As-Salam. We would know that the owner of peace, the peace, the one who really owns every aspect of peace. His word is in our midst. What have we done to try and understand it? My brothers and sisters, we make a resolution that we will make an effort on a daily basis to, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try and understand, even if it means a verse a day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us and not make us from those who abandon the Quran. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, the complaint of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا The messenger says, Oh Allah, my people have taken this Qur'an heedlessly. They have actually not taken it seriously. They have abandoned it. May we not be from amongst those described there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The next resolution that is extremely important to be made during an occasion of this nature is just like we have listened to the Quran throughout the month of Ramadan and we have achieved so much inner peace and we have enjoyed the recitation. It is important for us to replace all the forbidden CDs and discs and whatever else we have, whether it is in our motor vehicles, in our kitchens, in our lounges, wherever else, with that which is beneficial. So listening to the Quran is not confined and restricted to the month of Ramadan. If we are to replace the discs we have in our motor vehicles with that of the Quran, that of the translation of the Quran as well, or that of, for example, some form of reminder of the message of the Quran, Wallahi, our lives can turn. 
many people, millions if not more, have already turned through such activity. Why should we lose out? Why should we be from amongst those who have not achieved that goodness yet? So many others have changed their lives. They've achieved so much happiness. You know, when the train is moving, it's important for us to jump onto it as it stops in the station because it will begin to move once again. We don't want to be from amongst those who have lost out. So today, mashallah, we have our train that has paused. Alhamdulillah, there is a day, no fasting, a day of reflection, a day of happiness, mashallah. Everyone wearing good clothing. Mashallah, smelling good, mashallah. This day, do not forget your promise to Allah. Who gave you this day? Who gave me this day? The same supreme being who gave me the day, I need to please him, I need to make him happy. Imagine someone gives you something of goodness and happiness, and then you are pleasing everyone but him. It would be unfair. So Allah has given us this beautiful day. We promise that on a daily basis, even if it means just the 5-10 minutes that we are dashing to work, but we have listened to something beautiful in our motor vehicles, rather than having songs of the nude and the naked across the globe who are pulling us through their dirty lyrics towards the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of our maker, we can replace that, we can throw that away, and we can do something that will result in the barakah in our own lives, in our sustenance, in our health, in our children, and in everything we do, and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then another resolution we make today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us on the day of Eid and even on a Friday to dress with clothing that would be the best that we do have or amongst the best that we have. However, we need to know, my brothers and sisters, the ruling regarding clothing is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to us a framework outside which we are prohibited to go. What this would mean is a day of this nature, we promise Allah that we will dress correctly. Whatever we do, we will make an effort to dress appropriately. Although this may seem to apply to the sisters more, the reality is it applies to us as brothers as well. The new trends today around, you find very tight clothing, whether it is a shirt or a trouser or a jeans, sometimes it is so tight and the men think, you know what, I'm a man, so it's okay. My brother, it is not okay. Ideally, you are not supposed to be wearing that which is tight fitting, even as a male. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He grant us goodness. It's a day like this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to dress with beautiful clothing. That doesn't mean show the half of your body, or it doesn't mean now wear something that will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, it is important for us to know on a day of this nature, we promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I will ensure that I wear that which will not displease you, to say the least. And I promise you from today on, I'm going to be more conscious of my clothing. The sisters sometimes, mashallah, when they are engaging in their salah and their taraweeh and during the month of Ramadan, mashallah, the cloaks come out, meaning of the closets, of the cupboards, the clothes come out and the scarves come out and they are donning beautiful clothing during the month of Ramadan. Come the day of Eid, everything is packed again into the cupboards waiting for the next Ramadan. If that is the case, we have achieved nothing. Bits al la ya'budun Allah illa fi Ramadan. What a cursed nation who only worship Allah through the month of Ramadan. The same Allah of today was the same Allah yesterday and will be and is. He is the eternal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. So it is a very, very important resolution we must make today. That Ya Allah, the clothing I'm going to improve by the will of Allah. And this applies as we've said, the brothers as well as the sisters. Another resolution extremely important to be made. The matters that we have between family members, between community members that are outstanding, not yet resolved. It is important to use a day of this nature to at least make an effort to resolve misunderstandings and disputes. لَا خَيْرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّن نَجْوَاهُمْ إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ إِصْلَاحٍ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ There is no goodness in the private meetings or in the silent discussions unless a person is instructing goodness or is instructing charity 
O is resolving problems and matters between people. So we hope to be from amongst one of those three where we are enjoying good, we are enjoying charitable deeds and at the same time we are striving to resolve matters and disputes between members of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam especially. The reason is, brothers and sisters, we tend to forget that we are part and parcel of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam together and united we have a great might. Nobody would dare trample on us. But when we are dispersed and disunited, then we are blown even by the lightest wind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And it is very important also to make dua to achieve this. Because remember, we can try without the guidance and acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not be able to achieve much. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to resolve matters and not to create disputes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So a day of this nature, we will try our best to resolve the disputes amongst family members and amongst others by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an occasion of happiness. If shaitan becomes the happiest when two people are fighting, believe me, he becomes the saddest when they are mending their disputes. This we need to know. And in order to resolve a dispute, we need to have a big heart. We are not saying that you should allow people to trample all over you and oppress you and you just continue going and seeking forgiveness. That is not a part of justice. That could be encouraging people to do bad. But on equitable terms, we should, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, resolve matters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Another very important resolution that every one of us needs to make on the day of Eid. We will improve our relationships with our children and our family members, our spouses and all the others around us, those whom we live with. The way we speak to them shall improve. The way we treat them shall improve. This is part and parcel of the gift of Eid. What is the point of buying, for example, so many gifts for your family members and children, but the way we use our mouths is so dirty that they probably would feel let's return this gift. May Allah protect us. Yes, sometimes the attitude we have is so bad that they do not feel happy on an occasion of this nature. Yet it is a day of happiness. So it's important for us to resolve, every one of us, myself included. There is so much to improve when it comes to our relationship with our own children. The amount of time we spend, the language we use, it's important for us to improve it. Look at this, Allah says... And Allah is describing this particular day of Eid. وَلِتُكْمِنُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about completing the entire prescribed month of Ramadan and fasting and declaring the greatness of Allah, not only by tongue, but even by our actions. This verse is speaking of the takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship but Allah. Allah is indeed the greatest. And, we, we, and all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we are to declare that on a day like this, because of an instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to utilize the tongue, to utilize the tongue to engage in the dhikr or remembrance of Allah through this nature, it would be wrong for us to mess that tongue with dirty words, with swear words and so on. In fact, this goes to show, the verse goes to show that the best words are the words of praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best words are the words of praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, on an occasion of this nature, if we are instructed to make sure we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely it is because of how high in spirituality and in connection with Allah these words are, it would be wrong for us to then not resolve, to continue using our tongues to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars of Islam have made mention of something very important. And this is something I can take a lesson from and so can every one of us. And that is when our tongues are occupied with that which is futile, they will not be able to occupy themselves in that which is earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I am a person who constantly swears and who constantly lies and who constantly engages in deception, the chances of me engaging in the true remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
are minimized. Minimized and sometimes almost eradicated, depending on the nature of the abuse of the tongue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more conscious of our tongues. Very important. And one of the other resolutions that we should be making on this day is not only repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him to accept our deeds, but we should seek forgiveness from one another where we have faulted. And to seek forgiveness from one another where we have faulted, it is important for us to know it's not just a mere SMS you send people to say, make me mouth. No way. That's not how it works. It is not even a mere statement, brother, forgive me for all that I've done. Describe what is all. And if you have not described it to the person, no problem. Make sure in your heart you have resolved that you are not going to repeat it and you will try your best to undo it. That is when you are genuine. But for us to pay lip service like people of other faiths do, pay lip service to the term seeking forgiveness and they just say, forgive me. I'm sorry, but you are not sorry. Because if you were sorry, your life would change, your attitude would change. So many things would change. People tell their family members, I'm sorry. They tell their friends, I'm sorry. They tell others whom they might have hurt, I'm sorry. That statement is actually such a huge statement that we are to be thinking very deeply about the effect of that word in our relationship from that day on. <coughs> so every time you see this person, you need to tell yourself, I've already apologized to them. I've changed my attitude towards them and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We have sometimes made the issue of seeking forgiveness something seasonal. Where you wait for an auspicious occasion. When it comes, you send out an SMS. Bulk SMS such that you don't even know the recipients half the time. May Allah protect us. And people say, who's that? And you say, this is who it is. And then you scratch your head, but who did I send it to? May Allah protect us. This shows the insincerity. We've become people who want to seek forgiveness without really meaning it. And if that's the case, how do we expect to earn the forgiveness of Allah? If we treat human beings like that, surely we will also say, Allah, forgive me, forgive me. But at the back of your head, you are still planning the sin and you still want to commit it again and again that is not one of the conditions of tawbah or it is not acceptable because as you know the conditions of repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly we admit our fault secondly we regret it thirdly we ask for forgiveness and fourthly we promise not to do it again this is seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same applies to seeking forgiveness with one another you have to admit your fault you have to regret it you have to ask the person's forgiveness and you have to promise not to do it again so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors and to grant us goodness and ease so my brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to realize a beautiful occasion of this nature. We've witnessed so many of them. If I were to ask you, how many Eids have you seen in your life? You would probably have lost count. You might have to start thinking, calculating, what's my age? When did I start? And so on. Have we really had an effect from the days of Eid that we've crossed through throughout our lives? Let's think, what is this day for? So today I have tried to make mention of a few points where we understand its greatness and we make resolutions on the day of this nature to turn towards Allah, to improve our lives, the way we speak. In fact, so much so that we should be reaching out even further in our resolutions. Let me give you a few examples. A day of this nature, we resolve that from this day on, I will make sure my income is totally and purely halal. Very important. So I will cut out that which is haram. Sometimes people become overtaken by shaitan momentarily, temporarily. Where? Because there's a lucrative deal. They do not consider whether it is within the pleasure of Allah or not. And they quickly engage in the deal. They've made the money. And thereafter they realize on the day of this nature, when they go back and reflect, Ya Allah, I've got this, I've got that. And how I did this was not correct. Ya Allah, I'm going to change this. And I, from this day on, I will make sure whatever I earn will also be in your pleasure. Very important lesson we learn also from the month of Ramadan. Reaching out to the poor. Sometimes we become stingy with our own wealth. Because we find that we've forgotten the poor and the needy. And we don't realize that at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they gave out, they did not have in most cases what the average person from amongst us has. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who had no, nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, months went by, no food in his home sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet when they earned, for example, something, 
they came and gave 50% of it towards the cause of Islam. Amazing. How many of us would really, how many of us would be able to say 50% of my assets going lillah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not so easy. So if you see a person who is a beggar, for example, who's got $10 in his pocket and he gives out $1 to another beggar, that would be 10% of what he's worth. I don't think we could do that because the more you have, the bigger the amount. The, although the percentage might be the same, the bigger the amount. And this is why on one occasion, when a man came through, with his donation towards the cause of Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it happened to be a measurement of dates or in some according to some narrations half of the measurement of dates and some people were sitting and scoffing to say look at this man he's come in Allah Allah does not need this measurement of this person what is this all about? He's, he's just giving us a small amount of dates. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam admonished them. And verses were revealed, declaring that this act of laughing and scoffing at people who have given out such a huge percentage of what they've had is actually unacceptable. So the same applies to us. We should be giving even if it is a little. And when others have given whatever they've given, do not laugh at it. Perhaps percentage wise, they've given much more than we could ever give. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease and goodness. So reaching out to the poor is something we definitely learn from the month of Ramadan. Another resolution that we should be making is that we should improve our eating habits. My brothers and sisters, this I'm sure we would be interested in because many people are suffering health problems. Not because, not because of some sophisticated reasons. Sometimes it's because of our own eating habits, which are bad. The timings of food. Imagine Allah says, you will eat at this time and you will stop eating from this time to this time. You commence eating exactly at that time. Do you know that to delay your iftar is makruh? It is detested to unnecessarily say, you know what, the time is six o'clock, we're supposed to be breaking fast, but I'm going to sit until 10 minutes past six. That already renders your fast makruh, meaning it's detested. Because Allah says, eat at this time, immediately at that time, put something in your mouth. I think one of the lessons we learn is discipline in terms of food. Set aside your meal times. Your body that is given to you is a gift of Allah. It is more sophisticated than any computer system on the globe. So if you are to get it used to a specific amount of food, a specific type of food at specific times, you will have a much healthier life than he who haphazardly eats or she who haphazardly <coughs> eats. And one day you don't eat and another two days you eat. And then for a week you realize you are overweight. So now you don't want to eat and so on. Wallahi, this type of behavior, we should try and learn from the month of Ramadan to abstain from such behavior. Because even though it was the month where we were not eating, the discipline in food is definitely that. Sometimes the quality of the food we have is not of a nature that would be healthy for us in those quantities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and ease. Like we say, today is the day of Eid. It is not the day of qada, of all the food you have not eaten. So let's remember, mashallah, we sample the food and mashallah, we enjoy it. We'll have a good meal by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reach out to the poor. Remember those who passed away, those perhaps who are sick and ill. May Allah grant them cure and shifa. But over and above all that, if our lives are not affected by such a beautiful day, we do not deserve the day. If our lives are not changed by such a beautiful day, if we cannot make resolutions to, go, to get closer to Allah, to improve ourselves in every way, spiritually, physically, socially, in whatever other way, then do you think we deserve such a beautiful day? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us ease and goodness. Brothers and sisters, every Eid, we speak on different aspects of that particular day of Eid. I hope and I pray what we've spoken about today can be relevant in our lives. Like I said, we've been through some resolutions which we have to make, but there are so many more that you could make. Brothers and sisters, I want to end with one more resolution. We all might have some form of bad habits. Some of us, it might be in the form of you know, the way we talk, some of us may be in the form of something much more serious. Brothers and sisters, on a day of this nature, it is up to us to declare that that bad habit is cut. It's over. It just requires willpower. 
many have even given up smoking by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> just through willpower they tell you today I stopped it's over May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us I see people looking at me mashallah May Allah grant us goodness and ease and make it easy for us I've given a simple example that's not the only habit that people would love to eradicate so many other habits so let's search within ourselves for our own bad habits never think I don't have any bad habit because even if it is of a very small nature it would still be there as a human being it's an opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to improve so whatever it is some like I say very very serious some might be hooked on drugs, some alcohol, some cannot stop gambling. It's a day like this when we repent to Allah, we change our lives. Sometimes it would require changing our company. Sometimes it would require changing the area we are living in because of the type of difficulty that we are involved in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may He grant us ease and goodness.